Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone and this is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well tonight we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start concentrating on lighting. So, what I mean by that? Well, tonight what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and build one of these. Well, you can't exactly see it, so I'll put a picture up right there. So what this is, is lighting for our layout and it's a real simple light it has a log that we're using for the actual pole and we build a light fixture and put some wires on it and plug it into a system and voila we got lighting but this is kind of a cool little thing what we can do with this is we can put it into our scenery as far as we can we can use it in the paddock area we could use it in a camping area or you could just use it where else you know anywhere around inside the layout but it's a cool simple little light and so this is the guy that we're gonna go ahead and build tonight now saying that <laughs> I do plan on building other lights as well and the reason why we're starting with this is it has a lot of basics to it and if you can start building this one the other ones are gonna be a little bit easier to build so this is kind of get our feet wet type of thing so instead of jumping into the deep end we're gonna start with a shallow end and go from there but we do plan on making like a stadium lighting and some track lighting and that type of stuff in a later video but this video start with this so <laughs> what we need to do well why don't you go out get yourself a cup of joe maybe uh some popcorn and uh yeah we'll start building this one all right so let's do this all right so let's go ahead and let's figure out how to make our light pole so what do we have here well what we have is a wood dowel and then that's all been scarred up so it makes it look like a, an actual log pole which is pretty cool we'll address that later and then up on top we have a copper tube onto a copper upholstery washer and then those two are soldered together and you drill a hole up on top run that through and then your wires come down the back side that are glued onto the pole and then you have your pigtail down below that you can hook into your wiring so real simple easy thing to build but looks pretty cool when it's all said and done so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side now the first thing that we need to address is making our light fixture up on top of that pole and let me take one of these upholstery washers and you can see that I've went ahead and beveled that out so it looks like a, a, a light fixture up on top. Now a, an upholstery washer is like a countersunk washer with a flange. Okay, You can see how that sets in. All right. Now what we need to do is go ahead and push that out so we can create one of those, the light fixture. Now, how I did that is I took a piece of scrap two by two that I had laying around the shop. You can see this thing's been laying around the shop. It's all dirty and worn, but also I've, I've used it quite a bit too, making different fixtures. And what you need to do is go ahead and grab a quarter inch drill. Okay. So a drill bit, drill down inside, make a, your, your center hole. Okay. So once you have that drilled down in, what we need to do then is I have a wood countersink and this is a half inch countersink okay so we take that put on your drill bit and then go ahead and bore out that hole and countersink a hole in here so that it has a nice bevel to it now once you have this built what we need to do is let me go ahead and set this off to the side and the uh the upholstery washers we're going to be using today are number 12s, okay? And these are just a brass style upholstery washer. So let me go ahead and I'll open these guys up real quick. I'll just take my bit. Open this up. Get these out. And you can buy these in packs or a lot of times at a, at a um, hardware store, you can actually buy these in uh in gross as well so you're not stuck with just only four in a pack you just grab a whole handful of them if you're going to build a whole bunch but with the number 12 it's a nice large style um fixture that we can use for a light pole all right so 
what we need to do to this is we need to take a, a center punch or you could use even a bolt or anything. But what we want to do is if you look in the center of this, see how it's all dished in, okay? Right here, and that's all dished out. We want to flatten this, the inside of that. We want to go ahead and make it all nice and flat. So what I do is I take one of these, I rotate it over, all right? And obviously, I'm not going to do it on this table because it's not strong enough. But I take my, my punch, my flat end punch, set it down in here, and with a hammer, like a bullpen hammer, I strike this down and flatten this out so it'll be all flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do that. When we come back, I'll show you the next step. All right, so we're back. Now you can see that I went ahead and I flattened that out, okay? So I took that dish out of the inside of it. Now what we need to do is we grab the jig that we made and we want to set this on the center of our hole. So we have our hole right there that we countersunk, set this right here in the middle, all right? And now what I'm doing is I'm taking like a pin style punch, okay? Not exactly the sh sure the name of this, but I'll, I'll post it up. And we wanna go ahead and set this down in the middle of it and then strike that with the hammer. And what that's gonna do is we push that down in, it's gonna create this upper dish to it okay so it's going to create that it's going to push the this center you know the flat and it's going to push it out and then we can create a fixture all right so kind of a cool little idea now if you don't have a punch like this you can also what i did is i went ahead and took just a, a bolt here and i ground down the end you know, so it slopes in, just kind of pointing it down, and that works as well. So if we take this and we take our, our bolt and we set our bolt right down inside here, that'll push that down in there as well. We just want to drive that center down into the pocket that we made with the countersunk. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and, and do that, and we come back. You'll see what this guy looks like next. Okay, so now we have our light fixture, and you can see how that's all domed out. And yeah, looks pretty cool the way that's just going to go ahead and sit on there. So cool way of making a light fixture with just some washers. So what I'm going to do is set this off to the side. So I'll set it over here. Next thing we need to do is grab our, I believe this is 3 16 Yes, it's 3 16 brass tube. And what we need to do is go ahead and put a bend in this so it comes down. And then once we get our bend the way that we like it, we'll go ahead and trim it off. But so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take this 3 16 tube and I'll just go ahead and put a band in this, a 90 degree. Try not to crimp it as much as I can. Um, I would use a pipe bender on this if I had one this small. I don't. <laughs> I only have it for larger scale stuff like conduit and whatnot. But if you have a pipe bender for one of these little tubes, I recommend using it because trying to do this with pliers and getting it is really tough. And there's a good chance I'm probably going to have a little bit of a kink in here. But we'll see if I can get lucky and, uh, and bend it without too much of a kink. So... What I'm going to do is go ahead and bend this now while it's still on the large stick, okay? Why I'm going to do that is because then I have leverage to work with and whatnot to go ahead and bend that over. So I'll go ahead and bend my tube. When we come back, I'll have my tube all bent, and then we'll figure out where we want to cut it off at. All right, so now I have my 90-degree angle into my tube, okay? So... Since I don't have a pipe bender, what I like to do is I take, you know, something small, hardened steel, and I can get in the inside of this and slowly start working it around until I get a bend. And then I just go ahead and take my needle nose pliers and just kind of apply it. And I got a pretty good bend on there. And it did kink it a little bit on the bottom, but up on top, looks pretty good. 
So what I'm going to do at this point is I have my bend here. Now I need to go ahead and cut this off so I can attach my light fixture onto the bottom of this. All right. Now, depending on how far you want that to go down, if you want it up in here or down a little bit, you're going to have to size that accordingly as far as where you want to have, you know, how much of a drop you want on your on your fixture. But the one thing that we need to take in consideration is the shank coming off this side that's going to go through our 3 8 uh, dowling. So if we put this up in here, okay, we want to make sure that we have enough that it's going to be able to go through this, not all the way, a little bit short, but also want to have it so <clears throat> and grab our our light fixture so if we put this up in here you know you want it so it's going to stick out far enough all right so you want to take in consideration as far as your your washer you don't want that all the way up against it you want a little bit further out now what i'm going to do is just go ahead and slice this guy off just down in here a little bit and then I can always come back in and trim it up exactly the way that I want it and the same thing goes with this portion up in here I'm probably going to have this up a little bit tighter okay so not so far down a little bit tighter up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim up my my uh <laughs> my pipe yes that's what that is I'm going to go ahead and trim up my pipe so then when we come back I'll have this down to a short little piece. Now what I did is I went ahead and took my Dremel and I went ahead and cut that off. So now it's just a little short little guy. Now next step we need to do is take our lower part of our light fixture and then put these guys together and solder them up. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get these both, both these guys all soldered up. When we come back, I'll have our light fixture pretty much complete and then what we need to do is go ahead and start working on our wood dowel for our post so I'll go ahead and do that we come back we'll start worrying about our wood dowel okay so now I have that all soldered on and yeah not too bad I also like to go ahead and solder down at the bottom as well and fill it all the way up so I don't have any light pollution that's going to come through the back side just try to seal it up as much as possible so at this point, what I need to do is go ahead and just dress up the solder around here, smooth it out a little bit. And I'll probably end up taking my Dremel and just kind of dressing it a little bit and blending it out. And then this is ready for paint. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and dress this all up and put these off to the side. And then what we'll need to do is go ahead and start attacking our dowling. So we come back, we'll go ahead and start figuring these guys all right out. so i went ahead and i'll just pick up one of these and show you so what i did was go ahead and dress it up a little bit with my dremel and then what i did is finish it up with some sandpaper and i believe this sandpaper is what 60 grit okay so if you just kind of roll it up like so you can get right in here on the edge and just go ahead and smooth that all out and you know it makes a, a nice transition you can see how that kind of goes all the way across now again on the underside went ahead and soldered around you know the inside of the pipe and try to seal that up so there's no little holes or anything so I won't have any light shooting up out of here plus the other thing is you'll notice that pipe that's down there is flush with the top of this okay I don't have the pipe hanging way down. I want it up inside there. So when I put my lamp in, I have adjustment. I can bring my lamp down or I can bring it up real tight inside, okay? So now we have this, we'll go ahead and set that down. Now, what we have is 3 8 wood dowel. Now, I've had this laying around. You can see it's kind of dirty. <laughs> but uh, what we wanna do is go ahead and cut this into 20 centimeter lengths. So at 20 centimeters, if we grab a guy, let's see here, we got a driver right here. So let's set these off to the side and put our, our light pole down and have this guy standing there. And you know, that's a, that's a pretty good size light pole, okay? So if he's like at six feet, we figure what, six, there's 12, 
you know, we're up around 18 feet. It's a good size light pole, probably about a 20 foot light pole. So if we grab our, our fixture up here, okay? So then we can figure out as far as how far up. Do we want it all the way up on top? Do you want it to come down just a little bit? You know, it's all preference of how you want it. I kind of like to have mine sitting down just a little bit. If you notice the light poles that are out in the real world, they don't sit all the way up at the top. On these pole light poles, a lot of times they sat down a little bit further. So I like to bring it down at least a centimeter, maybe even two centimeters, and bring it down like such. So the piping that we used, okay, the uh, the tube is, uh, oh, what was that? It was 3 16 I believe. Yeah, 3 16 brass tube. Okay, so what we need to do after we have your doweling cut to 20 centimeters is figure out exactly where you want to put it at, mark it with a pencil, and then take a, a drill bit. I have a drill bit here that's the 3 16 drill bit, and I'm just going to go ahead and drill a hole through this. Okay, now being that it's fairly good size, what we want to probably do is run a pilot hole with a smaller drill bit first and then finish it off with the bigger one. Otherwise, you're going to take a chance of walking all over the place. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and drill this and we come back, I'll have my, uh, my hole <laughs> in my pole and it'll be ready to accept the light. But before we can do any of that, we got to go ahead and uh, make this thing look like a log pole. All right, so now we have our, our hole drilled in there. Take your light fixture and go ahead and put it in. So we'll put it in like so, and there it is. Looks pretty cool. And it goes all the way through so we can run our wires out the back side. Now, this is a good time also to just go ahead and fine tune your arch and everything else. Get it so, you know, you like the way it's sitting and everything else. And uh, once you have that and you've made the adjustments, I got both of these guys up here. Once you have your adjustments, go ahead and pull those out. Okay, so we'll pull these out. Oh, that's a tight fit. All right, so we set those guys off to the side. Now what we need to do is make these guys look like old, worn out logs. So what I like to do is you can use 36 grit paper. That's one way of doing it. And I actually do that up on the top. So if you notice on this one right here, I've went ahead and kind of rounded it a little bit, kind of chewed it up. And then the actual grain that goes down the pole, I have a kind of a rip cut saw here. And what I'll do is I'll take the pole and just rip it down across it. And what I'm doing is applying quite a bit of pressure to it. And I'm going the direction on down. And this is just putting in a bunch of texture for us. So it makes it look like, it looks, makes it look like an old log. So go ahead and let me go ahead and do this a little bit more. And I don't know if it's going to show up on camera like this, but let's see here. If we bring that up, you can kind of see how it's all chewed up. Now, we have kind of these frays like that. I'm just going to take my finger and kind of pick them off. I want to get rid of the big ones, but kind of those small ones, I want to keep those. Because I want to make this log look like, you know, kind of an old torn up power pole slash light pole. So... I'm just gonna go ahead and hit it with this and then get it to the texture that I want. And you can feel it. You can actually feel the texture you're putting in there. You have pretty good size cuts and everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this guy and go ahead and do this guy. And then what we need to do is we need to get these guys painted and we need to get these guys stained. So when we come back, we'll go ahead and address that. Okay. So we're back and I got a mess going, <laughs> but it's okay. So what do I have here? Okay, so I went ahead and took whoop, took some little sticks and put down through the middle of these guys. So now I can go ahead and spray those out and not dirty up my hands more than they already are to go ahead and paint these out. Now with the light fixture itself, I'm just going to go ahead and use this uh, metallic aluminum. 
and it, it works out great. I've used it on other stuff, and it, it just gives it a nice machined kind of look. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and spray these with, is the, the bomb can uh, metallic aluminum. So I'm just going to go ahead and set these guys off to the side here. <clears throat> but on our poles, okay, you'll notice that I went ahead and put a nail down at the bottom so I can stick this into the layout. But also, which is nice about this, is that I can go ahead and hold on to this when I'm painting it. So again, saves my fingers from getting all paint around it. So what I did was just go ahead and drill a small hole down here at the bottom. And then I just have a little finish nail that it's big enough that I can go ahead and put the head in there. And there we go. All right. So now you could go ahead and glue this in right now if you wanted to. I tend to leave them loose because it depends on where I'm going to put it on the layout. Um, if it's in an area that's, it's, you know, the the, uh, the the polystyrene isn't very thick. I don't want this hanging way down and then it goes all the way through and hits the board. So I want to have that a little bit loose so then I can fine tune it when I actually put it into layout. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it there. It's kind of a, a tight fit. So, but the nice thing about it is I can hold on to it. Now, what am I going to use for this? Well, I have my wonderful Danish oil, the, uh, the dark walnut, and I'm going to use that for the primary first coat all the way over and then kind of get it to the darkness that I want. And then what I like to do is come back with some ebony black. All right. So again, I'm just using stains on this. All right. Not really using any paint, just stain. And I find that stain when it goes in, since it likes to bleed out and everything else, it's, you know, it gives a little bit more character than just hitting it with a paint. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cover these first with the Danish oil. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll get those uh, lamp fixtures all painted up. And then we come back, we'll go ahead and do some highlights with the dark back. ebony. I went ahead and I have the light fixtures all drying and they're that aluminum. And I have my first coat of the uh, the walnut stain on my on my post, and you know it looks it looks pretty good. Just just like that, it looks okay. You know, and you can you can see the texture in there and that type of stuff, and you know it looks cool. But let me go ahead and grab a second one. So now this one I added a little bit of that ebony to it. And this really gives it kind of just that worn old look to it. And uh, if you see in there, you can still see that it has some of the, the lighter walnut that's showing through. And then I went ahead and, and hit it with that ebony on certain areas. And it just kind of makes it look like, you know, it has maybe that creosote buildup on it. And it's just all weathered out. And then again, if we, if we bring this guy up, you can actually see more texture once you hit it with the ebony. It actually starts to pop out a little bit more than what it does with just the straight walnut. So how did I get it like this? Well, this was the first coat of walnut. Let me go ahead and set this guy down. Now what I'm doing is just using a real fine detail brush and I have a little white rag here. So what I'm gonna do is take this Go ahead and put it in and bring it out. And then like right here on the bottom, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit some of this. And I mean, it's, it comes through, man, and it's it really colors it down quick. So we have that down through here. And now I'm just gonna take my rag, whoa! <laughs> and try not to throw it across the garage, but just go ahead and hit it like this. Right, and what we're doing is we're taking that ebony and we're just kind of blending it out. So now the base of it has kind of that blackness to it like it would if it had some creosote down there. So there's a little bit of a light spot there. So I'll just go ahead and hit this right like that. And then I'm just gonna keep on using some highlights. So I'm just gonna hit it up like so. So there's a blotch right there. Take my rag, 
and then I'm just gonna wipe it like this, okay? So, and there we go. So what we're gonna do is just keep on adding this through. Let me hit some here right up on top, like that. And put that in here. Then we'll take our rag, wipe it, blend it, smear it. And there we go. So it kind of just gives it that worn out old pole look. So what I need to do now is just go ahead and let these guys dry. And as soon as they do, then we can go ahead and start assembling our poles. So we're back and our posts are all nice and dry. So we'll take a look at that. And that looks, yeah, that, looked, that turned out pretty cool. So now what we need to do is go ahead and glue our fixture onto our pole. So all I'm going to do is just use some Gorilla Glue, some of the, the super glue here. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a little dab right here on the edge of this. And as we push this in, it'll, it'll take shape right into it and smear that glue around. Let's see here. There we go. So I'm going to make sure, actually I got this on the wrong side. So hopefully that glue will stay there. Oh, come on. Got these things pretty tight. There it goes. All right. And there we are. So we'll just go ahead and get that all on there like so. And there it is. So now if you want to just go ahead and leave it like a nice shiny light uh, fixture up on top, you could do that. Or we'll go ahead and bring this one over. I went ahead and just kind of threw a little bit of weathering on this, kind of gave a little bit of a, a rust look onto it. And uh, it makes it blend a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do the same thing to this guy. So let me put my lid on my glue here. Put it over here and all I'm using are two colors. I'm using a satin black and then another satin and this is called cocoa bean. Hmm. So I'm using some cocoa bean and some satin black and uh, just a little fine detail brush. And more or less, I'm just gonna come in, kind of hit this like so and then use my finger and kind of dap it around a little bit and get the color to, uh, to kind of soften. So I'm just gonna hit it here and there. And what we're gonna do is a couple, couple layers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of this on as my base. Now I'll just kind of make it look a little bit dirtied. And now I'll come in with a little bit of black and then on, on those areas, go and hit it, take my finger, kind of dap it around, and it'll kind of give it a little bit of a rust type of look to it. So, and this again just comes down to, to preference on how you want to do it. You'll notice I'm using my brush and I'm coming in with my finger and tamping it. Yeah, it's just so that it, it softens the brush strokes. So we go to right here. And then I'll just keep on layering this back and forth until I actually get the, the look that I want. So I need that a little bit stronger. Hit this down in here. Now it's starting to look a little bit more rusty. So I'll just hit it. Like so. Get some of there up on top and, and there we go. And we need a little bit more on this side, but kind of get the general idea. Just kind of layering it back and forth with those two colors and just letting them work with each other. And it'll just kind of, when it dries out, gives it kind of a, a weathered look to it and then especially since this is an acrylic it'll dry flat so you'll have 
the metallic underneath it, that aluminum metallic, which is, you know, it's, it's bright. And then you'll have this flattened color over the top. So let me go ahead and set this one down. Bring this guy back over. And you can kind of see how, how that looks. So yeah, there we go. So what I'll do is go ahead and let this dry. And now it's time to go ahead and add some lights to these things. All right, so we're back. And all our little weathering up here is all nice and dry. So now we need to do is go ahead and start putting in the lights. Now, I am going to run two different systems. One of which is I have the uh, Woodland Scenics Just Plug It system. And then I also have the Eve model style, which is, you know, pretty much a circuit board with a bunch of different connectors on it for lighting. Now, why I'm doing the two separate is this one right here, this light pole is going to go up in the camping area of my layout. And if you've seen the um, magnetic racing Goodwood uh, Marshall post, I went ahead and used the just plug system on that on that um, building. And this light post is going to be in that vicinity. So it only makes sense to go ahead and use this block for this light post. So I thought, well, this would be kind of cool. We'll do it two different ways. At the same point in time, we can tear and compare as far as these two systems, all right? Um, on the surface, they look very much different. You know, you have the Woodland Scenics in the EVE model. And you might be saying to yourself, wow, the Woodland Scenics looks so much nicer. Well, it is. On the appearance, it is nicer. And it is easier to use to a point, okay? Now, the EVE model, obviously, is a lot more just kind of bare bones. Um, it's just a circuit board that's hanging out, no fancy cover like it does on the Woodland Scenics. But if you notice on the Woodland Scenics, on this backside, it only has four plugins. Okay, now Woodland Scenics also uses a special type of lamp for their system. So let me go ahead and I'll grab this. Oh shoot, where was it? I found it. Okay, so they have this uh, clip that is used right here. Okay, so it's just this regular white clip and this is this with this system it just plugs right in okay now each one of these is individual from each other which makes it nice to a point where it has a dimmer switch on every single um, connector so that if you have a building or something like that and it's a little bit too bright you can just go ahead and turn this and dim it down individually which is actually really nice now on the Eve model, it does have a dimmer switch, but it's not individual. It dims the whole entire board. So if you were to put this say on a couple different items and one was too bright, well, you could turn it down, but it's gonna then uh, light, it's gonna <laughs> to dim not only your building, it's gonna dim the lights around it, if you have track lighting connected to it and so on. So as far as that goes, yeah, the Woodland Scenics is pretty cool. But again, you have this one clip. Now, the way they make their lights. So let me go ahead and take this twist tab off. All right, so we got the twist tab off. And if we bring their lights out, so, and also when you, when you buy this portion of it, the, uh, the base model, or the, the first first portion of it. This is the dimmer control light, light hub, is what they call it. It comes with just two lights, okay? So two lights, like this guy, this LED style right here, all right? And it comes with two of these. If you want additional lights, you have to buy them separate. A lot of times they come in these types of tubes, all right? And there's only two lights in here. And the price on these is kind of expensive. So what we can do is I'll go ahead and show you this. So this is the LED that it comes with, and here's the light. Now, 
you'll notice the diode is down here at the end. Now, when you buy lights per se off the internet or at um, oh Amazon or, or whatever, a hobby shop, maybe a craft store, a lot of times you'll end up with lights like these, okay? Now this is a three millimeter bulb, I believe. <laughs> I believe it's three millimeter, it might be five millimeter. But um, if you notice on this, the diode on this light is all the way up here at the top. It's not down here at the bottom. That kind of creates some types, sometimes creates issues when you're trying to put it through something because all of a sudden now you're fighting this up on this one side. But you don't have any clip, right? So there's no clip down here at the end. So you can just go ahead and snake this through and just compensate for your diode up here and you got your light. Now, with this system, a little bit harder. So you're gonna have to have a fairly good size hole either on either side to get this thing through. Now you could go ahead and clip this and then re-solder it together. But yeah, you know, it's one extra step. Now also you could, if you want to run multiple lights, use this clip and then just keep on soldering on to the end here and run different lights as well. That's a possibility. Okay, so where am I getting at? Well, what I'm getting at is, let's take this light pole, for instance. Now this has the Woodland Scenic system. Now, I couldn't exactly use this LED because I'm not gonna be able to snake it through. I'm gonna have to cut the wire in order to do that. So, Woodland Scenics has this little guy like this. Let me bring this guy up. Teeny tiny, kind of a, a micro light, okay? And it's actually this guy right here. They call it the Nano Light. Now with the Nano Light, you can go ahead and snake it around, put it into, you know, different things. But if we, and it took me a while to get this into here. Okay, I'm just make that indication right now. This little end right here is kind of a pain in the butt trying to get around our bend. But now we have this little light and if we pull this up, okay, what we're gonna have to do is put some super glue on the end of that to hold it at a certain area right there, okay? And plus the other thing is, you know, I mean, it's cool, but I'll show you when we do the other one. But there's no little light down here or anything else. It's just the little nano light that's hanging down inside. So we'll go ahead and put that one here. And now we have this guy. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and snake this through and hopefully this goes smooth. If not, I'll just keep on, start stop the camera and then I'll, I'll go on through, but Bam, just like that. I just got the lights through. So, got that on there. And this is all sneaking on through. And now we've got this, which we can go ahead. And it's going to take some maneuvering. But I'm going to be able to get that light up inside there. All right? It's going to take a little bit of manipulating with the hole because we have the diode right there. But I'm probably going to have to take... Let me pull this back out. I'm going to have to take a, uh, a needle file and file this out just a little bit so I can fit this diode through. But let's get back to the tear and compare a little bit. So we kind of got an idea of how those go in. Now, as far as price range goes, this comes with your, um, your transistor and it comes with two lights in this guy right here. Well, that, this little jewel right here cost me about 40 bucks US, okay? So two lights, transistor, box. Let's go over to the EVE model. EVE model, this little guy right here cost me $15 US. This, as far as a transistor, is one that I had laying around that had the correct end to it. Now, 
you can buy a transistor to work for this or if you have a transistor but it does not have the correct end to it not only does it have the plug-in for it but it also has this little guy off to the side so if you had a transistor that had the wrong plug you could cut it off strip the wires down put it in the positive and negative and bam you got it so kind of a plus not only that price is a major plus this has 28 ports this has four ports other thing these lights right here if you were to buy these online these little lights i got ooh, i believe i got around a hundred of them <laughs> okay so i got a hundred of the and i believe these are their three millimeter lights leds for a hundred of these I purchased all those for $12. So $12, $16, have this sitting on the shelf versus $40 and two lights. So what's my conclusion? Well, you know what? It's cool, it's pretty, but it's going underneath the layout and I'm never gonna see it. So, do I want $40 or do I want to spend $16? I think I'd rather spend 16 bucks. Plus this can work in conjunction with this and go off to multiple different areas. So just an idea. Just want to throw that out there. So now that we got that out of the way, what I'm going to do is go ahead and do a little bit of needle filing down in here so I can get these diodes in. And then what I need to do is just go ahead and slide this through, super glue it in, and then when we come back, we'll go ahead and figure out our wiring on the back side. And I went ahead and I've got my light inside of this one right here. Just got to line that out a little bit better. But yeah, kind of cool, that bulb hanging down like that. So now we have our wires all the way through. You notice one is white and one is black. Well, now well, I don't exactly want a white wire hanging down the back side of this. And the same thing with the, uh, the Woodland Scenics. Except for these wires are even smaller. But again, one is white, one is black. So what we want to do is go ahead and take some black acrylic paint and what I'm going to have to do is take the white wire and then we're just going to paint it out black. So, and this acrylic will actually dry onto it and uh, yeah, it'll look good. And since we aren't going to be, you know, playing with the lights a whole bunch once they're on the layout, it'll be fine. It'll stay right on there, has enough adhesion that uh, it's not going to flake off or anything. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and paint that wire out black. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and get these glued down the back side of our port. All right. So here is the one with just the regular LED, the EVE model light. And I went ahead and glued it in as far as the um, cables or the... <laughs> The wires down the back side of the uh, pole and yeah looks pretty cool the way they're all just right there on the edge you can barely see them really being that they're black against the black pole but if you do see them they actually look like real wires running down the pole so pretty cool pretty realistic so <clears throat> how i'm doing that is just taking the wire okay and just keeping a little bit of tension on it now you want to make sure that everything is dry before you do this because like with this one is the woodland scenics with that nano bulb and if it wasn't dry and i went ahead and put tension on it i'm going to pull that light right back through and like i said this one was kind of a pain to try to snake it back through that bend so if you don't want to have to do it a second time just make sure that's nice and dry before you do this so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take a little bit of super glue. 
We'll get that guy off to the side. And then we're just gonna, every once in a while, put some right here on the back side of our wire. And then, and just kind of go down right in a straight line and put some tension down on it. Now it might pull some of the acrylic paint off on our wire, but that's okay. Cause now that the whole entire wire is coated, if we do pull some off, it's gonna be on the surface and it's real easy just to come back and touch it up. So just to kind of put that out there because you might do this and go, oh, wait a minute, Boone, it is pulling the paint. Well, you can come back and touch it up. So we're okay there. So it dries pretty quick. There's that one. I think I still have some super glue. I'm just going to drop this down a little bit further. Put some super glue on the back side of that. Keep it in a straight line. And just go ahead. Yep, you can see right there. See how it pulled a little bit of that acrylic paint off the wire? It's okay. We can come back and touch that up. And there we go. So just go ahead and keep on doing that. I'm probably going to do two more spots down here and then just go ahead and let that dry. And then our light poles are ready to uh, go mount them on the layout. So we come back, I'll have uh, these all dried. We'll give them one last look and then uh, we'll go find new homes for them on the layout. Okay. So we're back. I went ahead and got that all glued on and touched it up and it looks pretty good. And this is the Woodland Scenics and you can see that the, the lights themselves are a little bit different color. This has a softer light to it. Now, Woodland Scenics has multiple different color lights. You can have a soft light like this, you can get a bright light. There's all sorts of different spectrums of lights. Red lights, blue lights, yellow lights. I mean, they got everything. Same thing though with the LEDs if you're just going to go ahead in this see I've got this kind of rigged up because you actually doesn't clip in like the Woodland Scenics you actually have to wire this thing but just for on the table test right here this should work but same thing with with this light oh let's see here kind of hard to do this Okay, come on, get it in there. <laughs> one nice thing about the Woodland Scenics, it has the clip, goes right in. This one, I haven't soldered the long lines onto it yet, so I'm just trying to do a table test. But at the same point in time, I thought it'd be a good time just to show you guys as far as the way this looks. I keep on, there we go. So, ah! <laughs> having issues well, let's see here the wires are so small come on there we well there we go so ah, if I can keep it in I'm, I'm trying to use this little hole over here and the wires are so small there we go but you can see the difference with that. If, it, if I keep my wire in the right spot. But it looks pretty cool. Okay. Now, I'm not sponsored by Woodland Scenics or by Eve Model. I just want to go ahead and put that out. But since I have both systems here and I'm using them on the layout, I figured this was a good way of doing it. A tear by, you know, a, a tear down side by side. Now... Like I told you about the dimming capabilities of the Woodland Scenics. So we have it plugged in on the hub, this little screw right here. You can go ahead and move this and we can actually, if it will, oh, I don't know, I was on the wrong one. This one right here, we can make it brighter or we can bring it down. So kind of cool, but not affiliated with Woodland Scenics or Eve model, in fact, I love Woodland Scenics as far as their grass that they have, the static grass and their different flo uh, flocks and everything else. I've used tons of it on my layout. It's just when it comes down to the lighting system, this is very easy. It's straightforward, has a lot of bells and whistles to it. 
but it's going to cost you a lot more to light your layout with Woodland Scenics versus, say, the Eve model system. So I just want to go ahead and put that out for you guys because a lot of guys that are getting into the hobby, they're, they're seeing stuff, and Woodland Scenics is out in the front of everybody. And they're like, whoa, I want to light something up. And all of a sudden they see a building <clears throat> that they want to light up. And by the time they get all their lights into it and everything else, they're looking at their final um, pocketbook and they're going, man, I just can't afford to do that. I'd love to do it, but it's too expensive. Well, there's other alternatives. You don't have to use Woodland Scenics. You can use something like this. It's very cost effective and uh, it's a whole lot of bang for the buck. So just want to go ahead and put that out there for you guys. So next thing that I need to do <clears throat> is go ahead and get these guys mounted on the layout. And uh, we'll wrap this video up with a little flyover and see what it all looks like. And yeah, but pretty cool, you know, cool idea put some more lights on the layout so all right there we go when we come back we'll have these guys in their their new homes and uh we'll see what it looks like It's a wrap we went ahead and we finished up another video so kind of cool doing this lighting and stuff it's amazing how it just kind of brightens up the scenery you know just adding those little things here and there just really starts to bring everything together and you know this light pole is like you saw it's it's fairly easy to build it's pretty straightforward um and you know it, it just adds that little bit of wow factor so yeah if you like this video go ahead and like it share it with others and please subscribe to my channel and remember we also have 
the uh, Facebook group, and we also have the Instagram group. Check those out. Come on over. Um, on the Facebook, we go ahead and guys share what they're looking at, and I share different things that I'm working on. It's just kind of cool. It just brings everything together. And <laughs> there's always an and. And we also have that HO lo like lo lo layout <laughs> that I'm working on. So we're going to be bouncing between the big layout and the small layout and... Yeah, it's kind of cool. Got all sorts of cool stuff going on. And, <laughs> and the next time we'd go ahead and do a magnetic racing video, well, I've got something kind of special in store for that one. So stick around and uh, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>